Get ready to get uncorked. It's a new kind of show. Starring me, Cindy Ashton. With special guests, Katie Bray and Zeb Severson. Live from the streets of Laguna Beach. This is Cindy Uncorked. And today, we are talking about in our hot topic, the dangers of female power and how it affects your relationships. We've got Katie Bray and Zebulon Severson coming on the show. Now, you've got to love that name, Zebulon Severson. It's very much like a superhero name. But also in the show, we've got our celebs on the red carpet. And Jana Wise is going to be back telling us about what happens if your boss invites you to a planning meeting? How do you set yourself up so that you are seen and valued and heard and respected? But first, we've got Dr. Natalie Bolshoff and she's gonna tell us about the dangers of wireless technology and what we could do to protect ourselves from this. So let's get going, let's get uncorked. Wellness Uncorked is brought to you by Dr. Natalie Bolshoff. Is wireless technology affecting our health? Find out now. Where do you keep your cell phone? If it's not in your purse, you probably have it in your pocket or maybe in your bra, which is the perfect place to put it if you want to fry your boobs and your ovaries. Really, what we don't see can hurt us. A young couple I see regularly in my practice are having difficulty conceiving. The last time they came in, I noticed that the husband was carrying his phone in his front pocket. I asked him if he usually keeps it there and he said yes. I couldn't help but give him a little lecture. There could be several reasons why they're struggling to conceive, but lowering your sperm count by keeping your cell phone near your swimmers is definitely not helping. The development of the smartphone alone has revolutionized the way we function. However, what people don't realize is that these technologies come with a cost. Many new studies now show that constant exposure to EMFs can cause DNA damage, affect nutrients from entering our cell, and negatively impact cellular detoxification. Some symptoms and effect of long-term EMF exposure includes chronic headaches, migraine, chronic fatigue, cognitive problems, impaired learning and poor memory, chronic infection, and even depression. So what can you do to minimize your EMF exposure? Use a line line over cell phone whenever possible, especially if you plan to be on a call for a good length of time. Use headphone or put your phone on speaker when making a call to avoid direct contact between your mobile device and your head. Limit your Wi-Fi exposure. Maybe a little inconvenient, but turn off your home's Wi-Fi before heading to bed at night to eliminate overnight exposure while you sleep. Lastly, it is also important to avoid having electronics in your bedroom or have them on airplane mode. If you're using your cell phone as your alarm, make sure that it's far away from your bed. Radiation may interfere with the quality of your sleep. And most importantly, make sure you take time to disconnect from technology around you. Go play outside, just like we did in the good old days. All right, ladies, right now, I want you to tweet me and tell me one way you are planning to reduce your wireless exposure. Be sure to get Dr. Beauchamp's free gift, a complete health and lifestyle self-evaluation and the ebook Toxin Overload. Discover how toxins may be disrupting your hormones and preventing you from reaching a healthy weight. Go to wellnessuncorked.com. Now it's time for Live from the Streets. Well, <laughs> Laguna Beach. When you think of a powerful female, who do you think is a great role model today? Is that a better question for you? I've got one. Go ahead. Moana. Moana is a great role model. For children because she 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 controls the ocean and she's a strong independent woman I would say Hillary <laughs> okay so Hillary Clinton why do you think Hillary Clinton is a good role model because not uh, not about the good role model but I mean if for the feminine uh, you know she's like uh, capable of doing you know um, what what the man can do oh. judge Judy <laughs> <laughs> Um, I love her. She's great. 
Wonder Woman. <laughs> Andrea Merkel. Um, she's um, a leader. Angelina Jolie, because she's not like a woman like just stay in home. She like do like out, go outside and do some like charity. charity. Yeah, and um, a lot of people know know her. I would say uh, Gloria Steinem. She's powerful. She's strong. Uh, just her personality is a little bit more domineering. Yeah, a woman that is confident. I would say um, like a Michelle Obama. She really inspires me. Confident woman who's got her act together, has raised two children successfully with their husband in a long-term marriage, successful marriage, you know. Independent, strong, um, confident. Um, I would have said the uh, same with Margaret Thatcher or uh, someone of that stature. Um, yeah, but Maria, here's the thing. Here's Maria the thing. Barra. They didn't save an island, all right? They didn't save an entire island. Oh, that's, yeah, okay. So there's been a growing trend of women wanting to tap into their feminine power. And while it's beautiful and wonderful and expansive, there are dangers into stepping into the feminine power and how it affects your love relationship. And we have two synergy experts with us. We have Katie Bray and Zebulon Stefferson, and they are with us to talk to us about the dangers of female power and what true female power is. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. We yeah. are too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I thought feminine power was a good thing. It is a good thing. And? Except when it's false. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's the false pe feminine that we actually have been seeing a lot more of, and, and we're really seeing a significant power struggle and challenges with that. It's very dangerous. So what is a false feminine? So the false feminine now has been showing up as the opposite to the older masculine, right? Oh. And so it's still in the same game as that older masculine feminine uh, dynamic, right? And so what really what we're talking about is ultimately is being into a place where the feminine and masculine balance is on a whole nother game. It's, it's in a different playing field, really. Right, so what are the characteristics of a false feminine? Yeah, so it's, it's oftentimes the women that we see as being overly aggressive, I'm gonna go get mine, I don't need anybody, and that's not to say that, that feels like I'm, a, the, I'm yeah. all about independence. Like, right. I'm an independent woman, yeah. but I'm in a relationship, and right. the thing is, is having this attitude of I need to get mine and aggression aggression and go after and go oh, after it. Oh so really Not what good. the false feminine is that women are really seeing feminine power as I have to step up and ask for what That's I want right. and be assertive yeah. but really what they're doing is having this pushing energy. Absolutely yeah. and it yeah. repels it literally repels. Yeah it's almost like a woman but having masculine uh, qualities or traits right. and saying that that is their feminine power and it's not. So how is this affecting the relationships oh. then? Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> we just well, opened listen. a can of worms. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. How long if, do we have? I know, how long do we exactly. have? Right? <laughs> because if we're not actually talking about a homosexual relationship, you're basically talking about two men in a relationship and it's not yeah. even balanced. Okay. That's a problem. <laughs> okay. So. Because the guy's like, I thought I was with a woman. And she's like, but you are. And he's like, but this doesn't feel right. Yeah. So give me some kind of scenarios of what the imbalance looks like, mm -hmm. like real world scenarios. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that it looks like is somebody being in a false feminine, their partner, they want them to be soft, nurturing, mm -hmm. caring, mm -hmm. but in an, in a, in a emasculating way almost. Mm -hmm. It doesn't leave any of the room there for the strength and the power for the man to have. And if that man, it draws back, doesn't have that strength and power, what ends up happening is the woman then says, well, why doesn't my significant other stand up for himself? Why is he such a wuss? Oh, right? so, so really the, it's like, I want my man to adore me and be soft and this and this and like, dude, why the freak didn't you like step up? Exactly. That's exactly right. right? Exactly. So you're giving them mixed messages. Very mixed messages and the man doesn't know how to be. And, yeah. and that's the thing. One of the things that we see across the board is men genuinely, genuinely want to please their partner wow. and love yeah. their partner. They want to feel like the solution. They want to feel like all of these amazing things to her. But if they don't know what that looks like and they don't know where their position is and they feel like they're in a lose-lose scenario, it gets really bad because 
they often will say, I'm not going to put any more into this or I'm going to put less into this because men oh. like to invest in things that have some kind of guarantee. There's some, some kind, kind of payoff, payoff. Right. and there's yeah. really no payoff. And so they just end up shutting down and then they get in trouble for shutting down. Right. So it's a cycle. it's like, why are you being a wuss? Exactly. Like, and I now you're shutting down. kind of wanted me to be soft and now Exa you're right. Right. And now yeah. you're shutting Whoa. down and see, you're an unemotional man and you're not even available. Oh. And I do, you know, I'm always with these men and it's like, that's your pattern, sweetheart. That's not him. Right. That's this what so you create. Yeah. And so, Zeb, as the man, I mean, you yes. have an amazing yeah. relationship. You are Thank the you. epitome, like, example for us. Um, so what happens to a man when he's totally shut down? In the, like, does it affect other parts of the relationship as well? Right. It, it affects the relationship sexually. Um, in what there way? can be impotence. Um, you start getting actually into a dynamic of where the man starts feeling more like a son. And does the son want to be with his mother? Like Ew. that's a whole yeah. nother that's a whole nother show, right? That's and not now good. we're talking Freud. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. exactly. So there's no space for the man to be the man and to have that romantic relationship with his partner. So a lot of times it shows up in the intimacy. Um, side between the relationships. Yeah, and and we're not talking about the man being the man. We're not going right. back to the dark ages where we're being totally <laughs> traditional. Man. That's right. I mean, he could club me over the head anytime. That's fine. Right. Yeah, but he has my permission. But he's cute. Right. <laughs> exactly. We like him. He's we cute. have an arrangement. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's not that, but it's about really honoring and and respecting the flow between the divine masculine and feminine, but really in a very balanced way. Men can be nurturing because men also have those feminine qualities, but there's a time and a place for them to be brought out. And there's a time and a place to really let him be in that space of clarity and focus. And I'm getting this and I'm providing this and I'm doing this. It's very important to them. So this is all very interesting. And I bet our viewers are wondering, well, what is the true feminine power and how are men supposed to be men and women supposed to be men, women <laughs> and all this integrated stuff and it's all very confusing. So let's go to commercial break and of course, let's get our people to get uncorked and when we come back, Zeb and Katie are gonna give us a scoop. So we'll see you then. My name is Maxine Warsh and I'd like to introduce you to the Warsh cloth. Simple to use, water only. With a warm cloth, you're going to remove all of your makeup. My face is clean and smooth and exfoliated, water only. The washcloth, some people call it a miracle, I call it practical. Well, what do you think is the difference between masculine and feminine energy? <laughs> I don't have a clue. Masculine masculine energy might be a little bit more dominant oh okay um masculine i don't know i mean masculine energy is more uh protector provider no i don't have any idea or, you know i thought i was a yeah. pretty smart guy but these questions are not didn't work for me go ahead do you know yeah hmm. Uh, I would say feminine is more like um, soft, uh, you know, um, more like, um, uh, but then the masculine is more like violent, you know. <laughs> Not <laughs> really <laughs> violent, but like. <laughs> I see myself probably as more feminine sometimes than masculine. Um, I think they're more emotional. Um, they're more easy to communicate with. Um, women are a little smarter at first, so they mature quicker. Uh, in terms of what they are, I think that's a very blurry line, and uh, I think there are a lot of factors that go into kind of the uh, generic masculinity and femininity. So in terms of uh, what makes them each other, I think that's kind of up to the perceived individual, but uh, I think that it's okay for a man to have more feminine energy and a woman to have more masculine energy. Okay, boy, our viewers are very interesting. <laughs> As always. So, Zav and Katie, what does it look like for a man to be the man, the woman to be the woman, and what if, if we know what false feminine is, what is the true feminine mm -hmm. piece of it? What is true feminine power? Um, to me, it's, in my experience and the people that we've worked with, we see it all about 
nurturing, intuition, um, groundedness actually, flow, um, holding space. There is a very powerful place that women come from when, they're, when they listen to their intuition and they allow themselves to be guided by that. That's in relationships, that's in business, that's with family. Yeah. But we have forgotten that nurturing is one of the greatest superpowers that yeah. we have, that we can right. be fierce and nurturing at the same time. So many women that I have seen and we work with, go into that Kali, the goddess Kali energy, where they're like, I'm a woman, it's gonna be unbridled energy. It's going to be this rage. Right, 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 right. Exactly, exactly. And for him to be a man, he has to be able to handle the fact that I'll be in a different mood every two seconds of the day. And it's like, yeah. ah! Oh, so boy. there's there's actually, when we come into that place of flow, um, it actually goes everywhere. And, our, and the man gets to feel it, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And one of the things too that it sh looks like is creativity. Yeah. Also, an inclusiveness, you know, mm -hmm. bringing everybody together. Those are hugely important. Yeah. And, and the inclusivity is also really important because oftentimes the false feminine takes everyone into a polarized position. Oh, okay. And when we yeah. polarize, we see others as opposite or adversaries rather than partners. So especially when we're talking about a romantic relationship, seeing your partner as an adversary is obviously going to be an issue. So that yeah. inclusivity is really huge. Yeah. It's the means of connection. Yeah. And it's also the way that the man in the relationship can feel respected. That's one of the biggest things that men need to experience is feeling respected and appreciated for what it is that they provide and offer. Right. And, of, and oftentimes that's support and that is nurturing. It is some of the feminine qualities even, but they need to feel respected, seen, appreciated in those things. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and there's definitely, once you get into the unbalanced feminine, it goes back and forth between the unbalanced masculine also. So the unbalanced fem feminine can look like um, manipulation, um, overly emotional, and then that can- Possessive. Yeah, possessive. And then that can go and cycle into controlling, being empty, being mm -hmm. void, um, too aggressive, right? It just goes back and mm -hmm. forth, unless you do something of the balanced nature or characteristics to get you up into that balanced, mm -hmm. uh, more ideal way. What are a couple of things that women who are really trying to get this feminine empowerment mm -hmm, thing going, mm -hmm. what are two things right now that they can start to do to tap into their true feminine mm -hmm. power? One of the first things that I always say is to actually start doing something nurturing for yourself. Get into your body, nurture yourself, nurture your creativity, as he was saying, creativity. Yeah. That's really, really important. The other thing is to, to look at your relationship and to see how you're showing up in that relationship. You know, are you showing up as being manipulative or in a power struggle? Or are you showing up being nurturing and compassionate and inclusive with, again, with the creativity? And you can also look to see if there's any similarities. You know, as you're showing up, you stop and ask yourself, is this familiar? Where have I been like this? Or where are these oh, feelings shown up before? Because oftentimes we're acting in a habit from something that happened in the past. Mm -hmm. And so if you're working from your highest place moving forward, there's a detachment there from the past. You yeah. can't be operating moving forward from a past place or past experiences. Yeah, it disrupts that autopilot. And that's really important. There, There is so much power in just being conscious about these things yeah. Yeah. because it starts to reveal itself and then you can sort of self-assess yeah. what's going on. Yeah, these are great strategies. I know you've got one more I know, Fantastic this one's a good one. one. And this it, one's a good one. It is, and it's one of my favorites uh, because for me, it's I, I'm, I've been a businesswoman for a long time too, yeah. so it's, it's easy for me to go into a masculine mode and right. so I'm constantly this having to done. bring myself exactly. back. I'm going to whip the, this in. That, right. That's right. And so I'm constantly having to bring myself back, and the way that I often do it is I will, um, I will usually journal or I'll write out some things that I need yeah. to really just get out of my system, and then here's the really important piece as it relates to your relationship. If there is anything that your partner can support you in, in the, the what you see going on with yourself, if you say, I know there's a solution for this, or maybe I need feedback on what the solution right. is, go to your partner and ask mm -hmm. if he can support you in this solution or if he has any input. Because right. that right there brings in the inclusivity. It helps him feel heard, appreciated, oh, respected, and I you have it. that yeah. connection again. And so, the female can go back into that more flowing, beautiful, balanced, feminine. Right. With some masculine 
Of and course. that and then enables the, the male to be in that masculine role with a little bit of that feminine. Right. So I know that a lot of reviewers are now starting to wonder, well, I don't know if I'm if I'm really being in my false feminine or if I'm there and I'm not clear. Right. You actually have some kind of a, an assessment mm -hmm. where they can figure out if they're in the false feminine and if it's showing up in the relationships. Yes. Yeah. Tell us about it. So um, it's this quick assessment comparatively um, and the questions really just illuminate on where you're at in your relationship. Right. So by going to our website at lovewiththelightson.com. Love with the lights on. Exactly. <laughs> Literally or figuratively, either or. <laughs> um, so, if, so if everybody goes to lovewiththelightson.com forward slash Cindy, there'll be an assessment there where everybody can take and get the results on, you know, how balanced their mm -hmm. masculine and feminine is in their relationship. That is brilliant. I've never yeah. seen an assessment on that. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited that you're doing that yeah. for our viewers. Yeah. Thank of course, you. Yeah, of course. So I'm going to breathe and nurture and try to get back into yes. my feminine yes. power. There you go. And we're all going to do that. So thank you for coming. It's been fun. Big group hug. Yay. Yay. Oh. Career Uncorked is brought to you by Janet Wise. My boss invited me to the next planning meeting. How do I prepare so what I have to say is heard and valued? Renee, a senior leader, invites her direct report, Georgie, to join her at a senior planning meeting. Renee wants to give Georgie visibility and credit for a job well done. Georgie goes to the meeting, provides the update, and says nothing else. That is called wasting the platform. That's a wasted opportunity. That could also be a career derailleur. Here's how to avoid that in the future. So if you've been invited to that next planning meeting, that's great. That means your manager wants to give you the visibility and the credit for a job well done. Here are three tips to optimize this opportunity. Tip number one, set up a planning meeting with your manager. Find out the who, what, and why behind the meeting. Understand the meeting agenda. Key to this planning meeting is also understanding what your manager wants as the outcome so you can align similarly to that. Tip number two, do the research. Now, not just for your PowerPoint or your business case, but take it a step further. Go deeper, dig deeper. Look for what's trending in your industry or your sector. Why? Because in tip number three, I'm going to tell you to share your point of view. Don't forget to introduce yourself. You never know who's gonna be at the table, whether it's internal managers, external clients. You wanna be ready with your own audio logo, with your personal brand statement, so that you can introduce yourself if your manager hasn't already done it for you. Leveraging these three tips will keep you coming back and gaining a seat at the table. So tweet me and tell me which of these three key steps you're gonna use to get seen and heard. Be sure to download Janet's free guide on personal branding at wiseadvantages.com. Next up, we have Getting Uncorked on the Red Carpet. Here we are uh, with Lynn oh, Rose, another well, I mean, motivational singer and speaker at your own fabulous wild card. Thank you very much. All right, so here's the thing, <laughs> is that we need you to get uncorked. Are you ready? Oh, yeah, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Sorry. Oh, oh, no, yeah, wait, we got well, to anyway, so my point is that, yeah, yeah, we'll do so, I mean, so, 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 Now that we're all feeling soft in our feminine power and men are having a window opening to our souls, let's talk about next week. Next week, Ivan Slater is on the show talking about how to create a loving relationship with your money. 
Dr. Nathalie Beauchamp is going to be all about, is skipping breakfast actually a good thing? Hmm, I wonder what that's all about. And Jana Wise is coming back to the show. And if you're an entrepreneur with great products and services that you wanna get into corporate, guess what? She's gonna tell you exactly what you need to do to be able to make that happen. And of course, we've got more celebrities coming. So be sure to join us next week on Cindy Uncorked. Let's get uncorked.